homes attaining to nothingness. It is reported about Rinzai, a Zen master, that when he was learning with his teacher, the teacher always insisted that he should attain the void, the nothingness, the shunya, the emptiness. So one day he came, he had attained it. It was a long effort to dissolve the ego takes a very long and much effort. It was a long journey, difficult, sometimes virtually impossible, but he had attained. So Rinzai came laughing, dancing, happy in ecstasy. He fell down at the feet of the master and said, I have attained. Now the void is there. An awakened one at times is observed that he is unsympathetic to the student because he knows what is and what is needed. The master looked at Rinzai very unsympathetically and said, now you go and throw this void also. For a long he was making an effort to create an emptiness. Now the master says go and drop this emptiness as well. Do not bring it here. Throw this void as well. Throw it, this nothingness. Because if you have nothingness, it becomes something again. Ego is difficult to dissolve and when it enters from the back door, it always try, always tries to enter from any side. So now you are holding on to the void. It is the subtle form of ego. Even a void is something. If you can feel it, it is something. If you can know it, it is something. If you can observe it, it is again something. Even nothing becomes something if it is in your hands. The Master said, throw this void out. Only come to me when even nothingness is not there. Rinzai cried. Why could not I see it myself? The void is an attainment. You attain to something. You had been guided by ego. Ego somehow or the other dissolved. There is emptiness. So you attain to emptiness. It is an attainment. It is something. If you have achieved nothingness, nothingness becomes a thing. When you go deep in the void, without any thinking, without any vibration in the mind, if you remain in this, suddenly the void also disappears. First ego disappears. Void means, and holding on to the void means, ego has entered from the back door and it is in a subtle form now. This is what we see all around. If you remain in this, suddenly the void just disappears and only then self is known. Self is not known when ego is gross. Self is not known when void is attained and ego has entered in a subtle form. Then you have come to the real center. It happens in steps. There is the false center. You are not aware that the center is false. All the religious people, they are operating with the false center that they are meditating. They are doing this. They are doing that. And for so long they have been reading the scriptures. They 
remember all the verses of the important verses of Quran and all other scriptures. You had always considered it real and then there is absence of the false center. After this, the real center comes. By centering, I mean the ground, the very ground of the being. It is not your center because you are the false center. So it is not really your center. You cannot call it as your center. Instead, it is the center, just the center of the being. There is a vast difference, my center and center of the being. That's why Buddha said, I am aware that there is an enlightenment all around. But there it is not, I have not achieved anything, I have not gained anything, I lost everything. The very existence is centered in it. You are the false center, you will disappear. But even in your disappearance, if you begin to feel fulfilled with the void, with emptiness, the ego has returned in a very subtle way. In a very subtle way, it has come back. It will say, I have attained this void. So it is still there. Do not allow ego to come back. Remain in the void. Do not do anything with the void or even say that. You are feeling it, that let it be. Do not even think about it. Do not even feel anything about it. The void is there. Be at ease. Let it be there. And you being ignorant, you being, you are ignoring it. For instance, there is someone, your friend or enemy is there. You Pay attention to your friend, but not to your enemy. So when you begin to ignore both friend and the enemy, this is what it means, then both will become irrelevant for you in that moment. Neither the friend will affect you, nor the enemy. It will disappear. It is just a negative part. The real thing has disappeared, means false center has disappeared. It is just a shadow. Do not catch this shadow. Do not cling to the shadow because the shadow can remain only if the real thing is nearby. Only then can the shadow remain. Ultimately, the void disappears and then there is centering. Then for the first time, you are not and you are. Both things happen simultaneously. From one side you are not, from the other side you are. You cannot say that the cup is empty or it is full. It is both. It is half full, half empty. But in this case, you are not, yet you are. Not as you, but as pure being, rather as the all, means you are inclusive of everything. And this point must be noted carefully, that it is not your center, it is the center of all. Forget the false center, go in and dig for it, then it dissolves. It is never found. It is not because it is false. So you cannot find it. Then a more arduous things befalls you. You encounter the void. It is very silent. Compared to the ego world, it is very silent. You are in a deep peace, a peace that you have never known before. But do not be satisfied with it. It is false. 
because it is part of the ego, the subtle part of the ego. And if you feel satisfied with it, the ego will re-enter from the back door. It will come back. A part of it was still there. That part will bring it back again. Whole will bring it again. Whole. Remain with the void without any thinking as Rinzai came and he was happy and he told the master that I have attained to the void. If you have attained to the void or if you have experienced something, your face will reflect that. You cannot hide. It will manifest, it will create an aura around you. So you do not need to say anything. The master observes your every movement, everything. That is just death like. One is dying before one's own eyes. Everything dissolving in the great abyss. And when you are disappeared, when you will disappear, only then abyss will be there. Not even the knower of the abyss. There is no one to know, no one to say anything, not even the observer of the abyss, but just the abyss. Then you are centered, centered in the cosmic center. It is not your center for the first time you are. Now language will have a different meaning. You are not and you are. You are not yet you are. Here yes and no lose their traditional differences, their customary meaning. You are not there as you. You are not there as you as you have known yourself. Now you are there as the divine, as the cosmos itself. This is the existential centering, the centering in the existence. It is not important what is your center of operation. It is not important at all what is the center of your operation. Whatsoever may be the point of centering, once you are centered anywhere, you can center anywhere, just as you can enter the ocean from any point, whether in from a, uh, from a beach in Germany, France, Italy, India, England, but you are entering through that point in Germany or France or Italy, but you are entering the ocean. The ocean is oneness. It may be called by different names. Whatsoever may be the point of your entering, once you are centered anywhere, you will fall down to the navel. Thus, there are two centers, the existential center and the operational center. Naval is the existential center. You may be a man of emotions operating through the heart. There must be a connection between your navel and navel, the existential center and the heart, the operational center. You must be aware of your existential center. For that, first ego dissolves. Then you attain to the void, you remain unconcerned and you go on ignoring that, paying no attention to it. Then you reach the existential center. Enough for now.